Hello and welcome. I'm uh, happy to um, be able to interview today um, a Belgian journalist from a Dutch um, daily magazine, daily paper, paper. Um, Roland Termote, from the paper that's called NRC Handelsblatt. And um, we are here to uh, talk about your uh, perception of Poland because you have spent quite uh, some time um, coming over to this country Correct. and uh, yeah. observing our country and you are based in Budapest. That's correct. I am based in Budapest, uh, but I come to Poland regularly and then I sometimes spend time in Warsaw, but also in other uh, parts of the country. So I've crisscrossed the country from uh, north to south and from east to west. So, oh, yeah. Yeah. You wrote to me that uh, this time, at least, you were planning to write an article about the political role of the Catholic Church. Exactly. Uh, well, not only about <coughs> that, but about the fact that um, I think I want to present the Polish Church uh, to a Dutch readership uh, again, because the Church is not necessarily the same Church that you see everywhere. The Certainly. The, the experience that people might have with their own uh, Roman Catholic Church uh, in the Netherlands or in Belgium, where I come from, uh, is also uh, really politically embedded. Uh, and and have these churches had their own evolutions. Uh, the Polish Church still plays a big role. And uh, so I want to uh, just, yeah, explore that role and see how important they still are, what, how they are not, uh, how they are or not, are not entwined with politics. Um, and, and, and what kind of social impact they still have. So. so, have you talked about this issue, generally speaking, to many people, apart from me? This week, uh, <coughs> well, I still have to talk to a lot of people, but uh, in the last uh, two and a half years, yes, of course, I mean, I have talked uh, about this issue with Polish um, uh, seculars, I have talked about this issue with Polish Catholics, uh, I have, you know, people... Uh, uh, who are active members of the church, uh, certain politicians as well. Um, so yeah, many uh, people across the spectrum, I said, I would say. So you have a picture. I have a picture, yes. Whether it's the, the right picture, uh, <laughs> that, that I won't claim. Yeah, course. but it's, uh, it's, it would be interesting to, to yeah. see your picture. <laughs> well, we I, all have ours. I think I, it's mostly a question of uh, contrasts, in a, in a sense, um, in the sense that what you often do is you compare it to your own kind of experience. Yes. And I grew up in uh, Flanders in a uh, society that was very much uh, Catholic and in a family that, that was Catholic in, in many different ways. Uh, and what you see is that uh, Catholicism in Flanders has, well, it has suffered extreme blows I think uh, it's, uh, it's it's become a, more of a yeah a lot of people are still cultural Catholics but very few people would still go to church uh, the church has lost its moral authority by and large um, and it's also losing its has lost it or has destroyed it um, I would say that that's uh, within the church you've had different movements and certain people within the church have definitely helped to destroy it. I mean you have had scandals with pedophilia, uh, with the cover-up of pedophilia um, and all these things. I mean that has clearly destroyed it because then you had waves of people who just left the church. Um, on the other hand, you also see that uh, uh, there used to be within the church also a popular movement so or, or Christian democracy partly came out of a laborers movement so you had basically you had the socialist laborers and then you had the Christian laborers who were both vying for labor rights with the, the elites who used to, could either be Catholic or liberal or or some such but these were actual um, uh, yeah pro-workers' rights movements who uh, genuinely cared about workers' rights and probably more about workers' rights than doctrines. Some of these were also led by priests who are still legends in their own right and who would be respected by everyone, regardless of, 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 which, uh, uh, yeah, of, 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 of which denomination or, or which kind of uh, walk of life uh, you're from. So, if you compare your experiences from childhood or youth, yeah. Uh, to the situation in Poland and the, uh, the way 
Polish church behaves, let's say, in yeah. politics. I would say that, yeah. yeah I, thought, I was just curious because you said you, know, you asked about the, the Polish church, uh, the, the church uh, in Belgium destroying uh, its, its moral authority. Moral authority. Yeah. Uh, do you have any um, theory, opinion on, on why that never happened in Poland, although the Polish church tried hard to, I mean, the pedophile uh, scandals, scandals uh, are all true around the world. I mean, how well, I as, how as, different as far as I can we? as far as I can see, I'm I'm not entirely sure that Poland is so very different, but it might be. Uh, and that is the big question right now. Is it at a different stage of the same kind of process? Because if you look uh, at at how many people still show up for services, then uh, it seems to be ever less, and it's definitely less than it used to be. Um, yes, I think that I'm not sure that it has not lost part of, of its moral authority. At least, if you look at the amount of people who still show up uh, in a Sunday service or for Sunday service, um, it has gone down. And um, and the question is perhaps also that these. Well, do these scandals impact people without them making all of this explicit? Um, if the church still has a lot of political power, I can imagine that people will be reluctant to openly denounce the church, but still have their own opinions about certain practices that are going on within the church. Uh, do you? But do you both think that if people go to church, including those who go to church every Sunday or? perhaps even more often, uh, do they go there uh, because they consider the church to be to have uh, some kind of moral authority? My experience, very limited, but still some, is that people on Sundays uh, morning or early afternoon go to church because they have nothing better to do. It's the only kind of entertainment, sort of, that people sing together, the places are beautiful, the, the only kind of entertainment which is free of charge and actually the best thing you can entertain yourself on Sunday so at the moment I'm not speaking and thinking about people in Warsaw or other large towns because it's a very different situation I think but in small towns where there is no cultural offer especially at this part of the day mm -hmm. it's really the best it's still culturally acceptable you meet friends or neighbors to whom you normally hardly talk about, about in this situation. So I think this is the main reason people, some people still attend masses or other services. Yeah, I do not have the knowledge to say I can only have my own uh, theory, but uh, you know I don't, I don't think that people like in general people perceive uh, uh, church as having uh, the uh, real moral authority over them, but they do feel it as a part of their life. I don't think uh, there's any explicit uh, perception in people's, in Catholics' uh, everyday practice, you know. Like, uh, I don't think anyone would uh, you know, wake up in the morning and say, uh, oh God, I need to go and see uh, what um, moral rules I need to follow today. So therefore I go to church this morning. Yeah, you know, of I'm, course. People do not It's have only our definition. Yeah, of course. But, uh, um, but then when you start a discussion, for example, on um, religion at schools, yes, there was a big discussion of... Uh, uh, stopping the financing of uh, religion classes in Polish schools and uh, many people would come up and say how do you want to teach your kids morals? Like, what, what, what moral standards would they have if it wasn't for the religion classes at school? And This is the opinion people have. I think there are actually very few people who really have this opinion Oh, uh, I've actually I've never met anyone who would say anything like that. But I know that something like that 
is in the air, let's say. Oh, I have heard but, many people say that. But some people may say it in certain situations, especially uh, if they are approached by someone who, for example, asks for a signature under the law against religion in schools or against financial religion in yes. schools, because they perceive this situation as a political challenge. And if they are on the right, they sort of automatically mm -hmm. uh, use this uh, right wing, in Polish version, right wing narrative. Mm. So I think this is, at the same time, they probably started sexual life before they were married, and they do everything what is forbidden by the church. Sometimes they may, avo they may avoid something because of fear, yeah. either of political fear or fear of their neighbors, uh, or other types of fear of perhaps being uh, sent to hell. But all these fears, mm -hmm. which can have some regulative power, have nothing to do with moral authority or moral guidance. Let's say. And wh what about abortion? Has, has the attitude that people take towards abortion in Poland, has it not been influenced by the church? Or, and or do they think what they think about abortion partly because of what the church teaches or not? I'm smiling because yeah. you are obviously very professional and instead of answering our questions. Yes, I would, yeah. <laughs> you have already started to interview yeah. us. <laughs> Sorry for that. No, no, I mean, it's it okay. It's a yeah. very good question, of course, yeah. because it, it seems to be an exception from what I have just said. Yeah. Because actually Same even way. many non-believers are against a liberal uh, laws on abortion. And that's probably because there is something which is non-religious in this problem, if it's a moral problem to a, to, to a degree, because although I'm for really almost total freedom of abortion, up to maybe third or fourth or fifth, I don't know, amount, mm -hmm. but obviously uh, it, uh, they have, not only Catholics, but those who support the Catholic, current Catholic position on abortion, because it's very different to old Catholic position on abortion. Until 1869, they were against abortion, but very slowly and for completely different reasons. Yeah. So this current uh, narrative has a bit of truth in it, because you actually, I wouldn't say kill, but sort of stop or destroy some very, very primitive form of life. So that's probably the reason that this proves to be quite effective. Uh, the church proved to be an effect, uh, effective in trying to persuade or dissuade people from supporting liberal regulations. Yeah, I see. Well, there are probably many reasons, but I think this is the main explanation of this particular phenomenon, because th this is really a problem, because only 13 to 16 percent of Polish people support really liberal regulations concerning abortion. Yeah which is very low, of course. On the other hand, uh, if we compare Holland or ne Netherlands and Western countries to Poland, uh, of course, the differences are huge. And I've just remembered my experience from about 10 years ago when I visited Netherlands with a group of Amnesty International, Polish Amnesty, and were invited to the uh, religious class or religion class in one of the Catholic uh, high school, secondary schools yeah. in Den Haag. Yeah. And it was the only time in my life when I defended John Paul II. Yeah. Although, you don't know, but I published a book uh, against John Paul II when he was still alive, the first critical book. It was very critical. Yeah. The title was uh, John Paul II's War Against People. So very strong. But in this class, I really started, I was very much amused, first of all, that all these young Catholics uh, encouraged, or I should say even, I should put it even more strongly, by theologian teacher, they really hated the Pope so much that I decided that I must defend uh, him as a human being. <laughs> so, well, if religious classes looked why did they hate Similar. him so much? Sorry? Why did they hate him so much? I think at that time it was generally political climate in the Netherlands yeah. and it was mainly because he was so authoritarian uh, also within the church itself and in Dutch church 
that church wanted to be more independent and more liberal Absolutely. and so on. Yeah, I think. Well, you definitely have certain wings within the Dutch church, which are, uh, and if you're talking about the, the Catholic church, but we can also talk about the Protestant churches. And both of these, uh, uh, yes, uh, both of these churches and the Protestant church still divides in many more Protestant churches, obviously, um, both have really liberal wings as well, um, who always, at some point, run into the question, are we actually still Catholic? Um, and I mean, to give you an anecdote of, uh, of a friend of mine, he was going to church with his, uh, uh, his father, who's part of the Dutch establishment, uh, and who basically uh, got more interested in Catholicism as he went older. So he goes to one of the um, really posh Catholic churches in, uh, in Amsterdam, with, uh, where you have this kind of yeah, community of intellectual Catholics, etc. And he took my friend along, so his son along, to say, like, you, should, you should just see this, find out for yourself, say what you think. And, um, well, the, the priest said, uh, said some curious things. I don't know why they were curious, according to my friend. So my friend took it up with his father and he said, like, well, uh, uh, this thing that the priest said. And, and, and there was another thing. I, I would, well, what do you think about that? And he said, his father said, do you listen to the sermons? Yeah. That's not why you go to church. <laughs> this is your point and you've been making for exactly. a long time. <laughs> um, and that is a certain kind of Catholicism. Um, and then you, you do still have strong believers, I think, but definitely in the Catholic Church in the Netherlands that has been waning, in the Catholic Church in, in Belgium that has really been diminished. Um, still, you do see it in, um, in the Protestant churches. I think that, uh, yeah, the real bulwarks of um, religious conservatism in the Netherlands uh, can be found, well, in several places. Uh, partly uh, in, in certain uh, Islamic communities and partly, definitely, in certain reformed Protestant communities, which are really still trying to adhere to pretty literal interpretations of, uh, of the doctrine. Yeah. I'd like to say that in <laughs> Poland, when we sometimes ask ourselves and whoever the questions whether some people are real Catholics or something, we usually if we are critical about what they do, what they think, how they uh, about their opinions and so on, political role, we often say that they are mainstream Catholic, not mm -hmm. some kind of Catholic, but mainstream Catholic, but not Christian. Yeah. And even some former priests in Poland uh, now say that uh, we are Christian, but whether we are Catholic, we are not sure, because Catholicism in Poland is often understood and criti uh, criticized for being uh, authoritarian, backward, anti-gay, anti-women, and so on. So this is Catholicism, you know, mainly political kind of uh, Catholicism as an ideology, not as a religion. Really. So I, always, I wanted to add something about this listening to what a priest or priests say during the Mass. I asked many people in Poland who attend churches, Masses, whether they listen or not listen. Of course, nobody answered that they really listen. So I even still plan already for a number of months to uh, make a program work like we are doing now in front of the church, asking people what the priest was telling about. Yeah. Them. Yeah. And uh, someone, of course, would be inside recording the real, uh, how do you call it, sermon. Sorry. So we could compare whether, you know, and show really instead of just asking people. Well, well, I, yeah. I do know people who do listen to the sermon, uh, but I think that that also really depends on uh, the church. And I think what my experience in, in, for instance, Belgium, is that you have few priests who uh, offer the kind of sermon that might attract the interest of people. Because where I grew up, uh, I could basically uh, uh, write the sermon myself, in the sense that we, there, was just, uh, there was a pretty limited list of topics um, and there was a pretty abstract and vague way of talking about it. So you would just cycle through the really familiar stories about uh, how you have to be kind to your neighbor. Uh, and if some uh, dramatic event happened in the world, well, that might just be yeah, tr basically inserted into that same really abstract yeah. kind of narrative. Um, and it didn't really, I don't think it really touched upon people's daily concerns um, and in that sense and then you do have priests who move away from that but you mostly see them in 
for instance, in urban centers, uh, and then there are activist priests who are somehow also the voice of a community, for instance, and then they are doing something aside from being just a village priest. They are mostly involved in other things as well, and that is something that then basically emerges in, in their uh, sermons as well, and that may be a real reason why people listen as well. well what I yeah. can imagine that, of course, even in yeah. Poland, and I actually I if talked to a number of priests or monks who were very interesting and reasonably friendly and open-minded and yeah. we talked about issues, so it's possible. But I think that even in those relatively rare cases, uh, people wouldn't listen mostly, with few exceptions, because they do not expect anything like that. So mm. you need first to listen to find out that it's worth listening still. Yeah. So, and in mm. Polish Catholic uh, subculture or culture, I think people just do not go to church to listen. No, uh, yeah. That's the main reason, not that they always say stupid, idiotic things. Not always, for sure. Well, I think what you also see in, is, is in Western Europe in general that the church has been diminished so much in terms of its, its appeal to people that um, and it operates in societies which are uh, also quite individualistic and uh, pride themselves on the ability to, uh, where people pride themselves on the ability to make their own choices in an autonomous way. So now you're at a point where the church is not dominant anymore, not leading anymore, and cannot expect people to be delivered just into its lap by the Catholic colleges, for instance, uh, or, or by, uh, the, uh, by virtue of the fact that people grow up in a reformed Dutch community, um, with some exceptions. So what happens now is that the church actually has to make a pitch to these people. So then you see within the church that people start delivering several messages as well, and different messages, uh, also to appeal to people. And then sometimes, of course, uh, while the cardinal uh, will tell them, no, we will not stand for this, or the archbishop will tell them, like, could you please pipe down there? Uh, but sometimes they do get some leeway, and then you see big differences in, in their appeal as well. But you see that they are reacting, uh, sure. and, and that they, uh, so they, they don't sp speak from this place of obvious uh, morality anymore, or, or moral, uh, they don't speak from the moral high ground anymore, so they have become a more postmodern church as well. And, yeah. Do you think, at, uh, you know, I'm, I want to ask a question because I heard from some people, hmm mainly in Denmark, but also in Israel, that yeah. actually in their national churches, especially in Denmark, it is called National yeah. Church of Denmark, actually about half of the members of the church, both priests or uh, ministers, uh, I, I'm not quite sure at the moment if it's Protestant or Catholic, yeah. or perhaps both to some degree, uh, that they are mostly non-believers or agnostics but they still keep the church and they want to uh, maintain the church as an institution uh, which would play some educational, social role uh, for those who for some reason like to attend uh, events yeah. they organize. So do you think something like that perhaps is going on in Holland or Belgium? Well, I, I don't know of any, and maybe there are, but I don't know of any opinion surveys uh, on the matter. I'm sure there, there are such opinion surveys. Uh, but I think that definitely many people uh, who are still part of the church or who identify as a believer are at the same time have, well, uh, certain views that are according to their own, to the doctrine of their own church, impure. Um, I could talk about uh, family members who, if I would push them on whether they believe uh, in, in such things as the Trinity, etc., would have opinions that would diverge from what is accepted in the Vatican. But the, um, would, they, would they know what, the, what is actually the Trinity? Some the members of the Trinity? Often you would have to explain them. <laughs> because in Poland yeah. they usually have no idea. <laughs> exactly. And then, and then when you actually, and also if you would refer to certain uh, parts of the Bible, uh, some of them, if you would ask them, would say, of course I do not believe that. Uh, and thinking that they do have the luxury to, to, uh, uh, to cherry pick. Um, also what you will see is that at some point with some Catholics, for instance, you will end up with them saying, I just believe there is something. And the church for them is synonymous with those people who do uh, collect for charity. 
um, and then help uh, a village in a distant country uh, or are actually yeah, actively engaged in organizing uh, uh, the uh, pretty neutral in a way uh, uh, social services or, or health services in their province in their uh, or in their neighborhood um, and that is then the association they have with it but but often it, it is not much more than that yeah. sure. But have you actually, sorry, because I just realized that as far as I can follow, uh, you have not even tried to answer our basic question. Oh. What about was the political thing? role of Catholic Church in Poland? In Poland, yeah. I, was, I was just with you, so I was just going to, because this is all very oh. interesting to hear Absolutely. you telling Everything us uh, well, the first hand. <laughs> but, yeah, but I would also yeah. be very curious to hear about your perception of uh, the, of our church's role in politics? Uh, well, it's, it's, it still seems indeed much more powerful, and I think yeah, it is much more powerful, and it is uh, what I'm not used to from, from home. It is a force to reckon with, so if you are making political calculations, if you're a politician, then you always have to uh, keep in mind what the church will think about it, unless you speak to a really small segment of the population. Um, and you always have to re react to them. Uh, and yes, in, in, in many ways, they also wage political battles uh, when it comes to things uh, such, as, uh, such as real estate, uh, etc. And they, are not, uh, they don't seem afraid to uh, confront mayors over this rather than going for a, or other uh, local politicians, rather than going for a consensus uh, or, 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 or you know, going in for a softer negotiation. They do seem willing to play a hardball tactic. So in that sense, yes, uh, they are a strong uh, political force. And um, well, it also seems to me that if you listen to certain voices in the church, that somehow um, uh, their message happily coincides with what the government seems to think. Um, I mean, the current government. What the current government seems to think. Um, because if you look at refugees, yes, yeah, some, some men of the club go out of their way to interpret what the Pope says about refugees in a way that coincides perfectly with what uh, the uh, peace government would say about it. And I'm not so sure that they are exactly on the same page, if you, if you would honestly ask uh, both of them. So you've said something most Polish people believe, that a uh, political position of the church is strong because politicians uh, listen to the church and but uh, my opinion about this is that uh, th this is true in a way because many politicians believe that if they set or decided to do something which is uh, incomp incompatible with the church's teachings, so-called, uh, the church would be against or they would lose uh, elections because uh, theoretically you are so Catholic in Poland. I think this is very strange that politicians believe in it because it has been already many times over the last 20 years when uh, the church supported the party which lost the elections. Mm -hmm. It has been proved, many proved, I think, not scientifically, but with elections, which is a kind of proof, political proof, that, uh, well, so it has been, as I say, uh, proven to some degree that Polish people, for example, would vote for left-wing parties, despite uh, very un, uh, unfriendly comments uh, sure. by the church. So uh, I think that the main reason that it works like that, it, it, especially also now when uh, Mr. Kaczynski, as far as I know, hates the church. Mm -hmm. And he's probably quite strongly anti-clerical. It's not only my opinion. It, for example, we have recorded a conversation with Professor Hartmann, mm -hmm. who is one of the best known uh, anti-clerical and atheist authorities in Poland. And he was a member of a politic political party, and he said, and you can watch it on the internet, yeah. uh, that he knows from politicians, uh, from Kaczynski's party, that he hates political mm -hmm. uh, Catholic church. But at the same time, they have they now cooperate, but uh, on, only because he believes that he cannot be against the church, as Mussolini did in 1920s and 1930s. Uh, but perhaps Mussolini was right to some moment, 
not morally right, but mm -hmm. uh, strategically or tactically right. But I don't think Kaczynski is right uh, at the moment. Of course, they are all very cautious and they do not want to make the church angry, and especially now when all liberal part of political scene is against them. But uh, I, I, I don't think really the church uh, is so powerful politically, yeah. as, apart from the abortion, which is a very specific issues, yeah. issue, and maybe in vitro, which is to some degree a similar problem. But what you say is, I think, or what follows from that, is that they do not have the moral authority to present people with this binary choice. Namely, you do this or you do that, and, and you vote uh, for this party or you vote for that party. We're in an age where people will not listen to that from anyone, basically, anymore, I think. Uh, so, but then they are just one of the many groups, and one of the more sizable uh, and important groups in mm -hmm. Poland, who can still do their political influencing. They can insert one team or one topic um, and we can talk about abortion, we can talk about things like what they call gender ideology. I mean, all of a sudden this does become a topic and, uh, and it is absorbed by other people who then uh, just mention it in a discussion, which they would never have done uh, or they, they would have never even have, have yeah, taken note of, of this uh, so-called phenomenon um, if they hadn't been told. Uh, by, by other people. So I think the church and or certain factions within the church still do have that power and have power to push certain issues and um, beyond doubt. Like unions do for Beyond instance. doubt, but a large just a second. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think that the perhaps the main part of this power uh, and the or the main source of this power is the myth that they are so influential. So I also think that the media, many people in the media uh, give floor to mm -hmm. the church about political issues because people in the media also believe in this. You know, when I sometimes organize talks, either for our TV or not for our TV, about so-called atheist revolution in Poland, and uh, what I say during these talks is based on serious scientific data, really, about the growth of non-believers or people who hardly believe in anything, whom I call uh, apatheist, People to whom I talk about and the viewers usually just do not sort of, I, I, I don't know what kind of verb I should use, they do not believe in my words. Because the myth that the church is so strong and influential and that Poles are Catholic uh, and they believe not only generally uh, the existence of God, but also the moral or political teachings of the church. Then this myth is so strong, also among atheists and anti-clerical activists, yeah. that they sort of reject the data. Maybe if I were a uh, moral authority myself, or scientific authority, they would listen to, because Poland is a very authoritarian country in both active and passive ways. But, uh, well, I have, you know, prints uh, with these results and it doesn't help. Yeah, but, but maybe that is also, uh, it's one of the different uh, uh, emanations of a, a phenomenon where people often believe that there is a hidden power behind the facade that, that is presented to you as the true power, uh, which I, uh, I see a lot of in Central Europe and I see some of in Western Europe, but to a lesser extent. I mean, uh, in the Netherlands it doesn't happen too often that, uh, or it happens only within a certain segment of politics that we people would tell me like, well, you're a fool to believe that, uh, uh, that our prime minister is not actually uh, uh, just uh, a puppet uh, that, uh, that is being steered by this other elite, and it's always a small elite. Um, yeah, in Poland I get more of that, of course, um, as you may know, and then um, I think it might also be for s some secular people uh, a nice belief to believe that uh, behind certain uh, conservative politicians, oh, there's actually another force and they are not telling who they are. Um, especially in a situation where behind the actual government, uh, a lot of political commentators would say there is another force, namely uh, Mr. Kaczynski, who may be a Today, yeah, member of the same, but who's not taking uh, the position of uh, either a prime minister or president or some such. Um, and I, I could see how that also sort of connects to, to that phenomenon. Um, 
I'm not sure. He's a chieftain of Poland. Yeah. Mr. yeah. Yes. And we are a tribe, or two tribes, and one tribe has a chieftain, yeah. apart from some magicians or sorcerers. Or so. so that's tribal social structure. I uh, have interrupted you uh, some minutes uh, ago. No. Sorry. It's gone. <laughs> Gone, no. But so you were actually saying that some people may think uh, that, that it fits the picture of uh, how people perceive uh, the 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 world in general, like saying, "Oh, there's a church behind it." Yeah, so well, I think <laughs> more often than what I'm used to, and I think it's a global phenomenon, and uh, you mostly see it amongst people who are who feel that they are being shut out of the elites. Uh, I think, or being shut out of some yeah. kind of club who happens to be in power mm -hmm. at that point, there is a belief that, uh, uh, yes, uh, hidden forces yeah, are at work here. If you are a peace supporter, you might believe that there's a new quad uh, behind the whole system mm -hmm. and that there's post-communists and, and a lot of corrupt people doing shady dealings. Um, but I can would imagine you say, that... Would you, you know, would, you, sorry, would you say that in the opposition, uh, uh, there's also this sort of like pointing to church as the power that's behind? Well, I'm not sure. As but, an but explanation to what uh, Andrew said? That would said. probably be exaggerated, mm -hmm. but you could see that that is also, uh, that there's a readiness as well to, to, to believe mm -hmm. that, or that that could be, if people, mm -hmm. uh, uh, you could see that people, uh, and it's just a hypothesis, but people might like to believe that the church is more powerful than it is, because that makes, mm -hmm. uh, in their eyes, um, that makes uh, the whole political situation a bit more sinister than it is. Then they don't have to reckon with the fact that a sizable part of the population of Poland just voted for another party than they did. But then they have the story of, well, no wonder they voted for them, uh, because they are in these sinister alliances with all kinds of other groups who should stay out of politics. I, I could see how that could work. I mean, it's, uh, theory, someone should investigate it. <laughs> yeah, I have investigated it to some degree, yeah. and not uh, scientifically, but at least I had, I already had for a number of years a close look uh, at those non-believers yeah. uh, who sort of want very, seem to want the church to be very strong in Poland. Yeah. And my impression or my psychological theory is that that's because it makes them members of the elite, of very courageous, rational thinkers who are, uh, who sort of are in a small club, which is much better, <coughs> in more yes. sophisticated and so on than the rest of this, uh, you know, primitive, backward, rednecks or other primitive people. So to some degree, I think this is, this is also the factor, yeah. a, fact, a factor, which explains uh, this kind of uh, for example, tendency to reject the information about the changes which have already taken place and still take place in Poland. Speaking about uh, the changes, quite recently, <coughs> yes, yeah. yesterday or before yesterday, I got the news from Malta, uh, the island and the country of the European Union, that they have just in the parliament managed to abolish blasphemy now okay. in Malta. This is very good news because uh, Malta, as probably few Polish people know, until very recently, maybe until before yesterday, was perhaps the most Catholic country in this Polish sense of the word. So Catholic meaning authoritarian and so on. And uh, over the last maybe three years, they have almost abolished all political restrictions which were imposed by the Catholic Church. For example, just a few years ago, they uh, legalized divorce. Now they uh, abolished blasphemy law. And there were some other changes also concerning gay rights. At the moment, I'm not pretending I remember everything. But as far as I can see, they managed to change the political climate, political religious climate, within just a few years. Mm -hmm. And that's another proof of the fact that, in my opinion, political, cultural changes of that kind can take place very fast. Now, in Poland, it's usually believed that you need decades to liberate ourselves from the church influence and so on. Precisely. When Malta happened, what has happened in Holland, in the Netherlands, 
in the late 60s to the beginning of 70s, similar changes, I think, have taken yeah. place. Uh, do, you, do you think it yeah, could it, be I, possible in well, I think what happened is that societal changes took place at a very large scale, um, and they were commented upon, but not fully noticed, probably. And then when you see some, and then you see moments of rupture. So you have all of that. Then a scandal breaks out, and then everyone who has been thinking for the last decade, you know, am I still a Catholic or not, or I don't care about it, or well, you know, I am a cult cultural Catholic. What's wrong with that? Nothing wrong with that. All of a but sudden, besides for, for gay marriage, for yeah, example, yes. exactly, um, exactly. And but some of these people then all of a sudden decide, okay, no, I'm not anymore. Mm -hmm. Or if indeed, yeah, you uh, uh, if you're a part of the church and uh, let's say that uh, you are a homosexual or your 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 children are. And then you are uh, confronted with this kind of problem that you see that the church does not condone of it. Then it might all of a sudden be a problem, and that's it's at moments like that that you start thinking, and that some people go through the official steps, or that they become more activist. But there's a whole process leading up to that. Um, again, I also again yeah. behind what is visible. Exactly. For a long time. Yeah, yeah. Because people would still on the census, they would still fill in Catholic, undoubtedly, and there will be less and less of them, but. Uh, not everyone who fills in the census with Catholic um, is a hardcore Catholic, I think. And you also have other phenomena, and yeah, it's, it's a bit like what we've talked about before, but um, this is not about religion, but a while ago on King's Day in the Netherlands, uh, someone shouted insults against the king. Now, uh, a, I think it was a prosecutor wanted to initiate, I don't know whether they initiated uh, proceedings against this person, because... Officially, uh, he could, I think, still be indicted for les majesty. Now, um, as soon as that happened, there was an outrage, and of course there was a whole debate, and I think the public opinion was very clear, no, we don't do that. I know that the law exists, uh, but uh, no. Then again, um, the actual amount of people who would identify as uh, active republicans, uh, so who, people who actually are anti-monarchists in the Netherlands, is extremely low. So if you, uh, and, you know, they have their own little newspaper and it's more of like an interesting intellectual endeavor and it's more like a hobby club almost, mm -hmm. um, but people don't take it seriously. So if you say like, I really, I think that uh, the Netherlands should become a republic, a lot of people might think that if you would push them on, on that, but a lot of people will not. And they, uh, they would not allow for any authority. Uh, uh, for the king uh, when it comes to politics, although, of course, the king has informal authority and, uh, uh, yes, well, the, the Dutch uh, royal family uh, uh, has, has influence in, in, in uh, vaguer ways, but they wouldn't allow for, um, for, for too much uh, formal authority and they would abhor that. Then again, at the same time, they still say, well, we're a monarchy, what's wrong with that? And what do you think about it? Because she's usually more skeptical when I say things suggesting that <laughs> uh, fast changes are possible in the situation. Yeah, personally, I feel so... Um, uh, I, I was not hoping for such an optimistic uh, conclusion to our discussion because uh, I thought we would um, discuss more pessimistic uh, forecasts as to the directions that... Uh, uh, um, the the current government has taken. I, I didn't say um, that only changes for good are possible, uh, fast changes. Mm. Of course, as, as it happened in Poland in recent months, at least on the very uh, surface of mm. social, cultural, political life, it's a very sudden fast change for the worse. So both ways are possible. But this good way or optimistic way seems to be possible too. You know, in Malta, just five years ago, 99% of people declared and behaved uh, as good Catholics. And suddenly they are almost Dutch mm. <laughs> in the sense of attitude toward liberal ways of thinking about society. I, I can only hope for, for this to happen, but uh, really I'm thinking, you know, we've had 20 years of... Uh, regular religion classes at schools. It's, um, did it you, has... Did you talk to young people who attend religious classes in schools, especially in large uh, towns? For example, my nephews 
some years ago, of course, attended religious classes in their school. And I asked them how uh, it looks like. And first they told me that they uh, called the nun who was the teacher. Uh, uh, what's the name of this uh, hero in American movies uh, played by Schwarzenegger? No, Terminator. Terminator. Yeah. They called the nun Terminator, yeah. which seemed to me to be very promising. So we continued conversation. And they mostly said jokes. And after maybe 15 minutes or half an hour, it was some years ago, I can't remember exactly, I asked them for fun. <coughs> Listen, if I give you 20, 20 zlotys, would you give up going uh, attending these classes? He said, yes, of course, uh, one of them. So I gave him either 20 or 50 zlotys, but really very little. Must have been 50. And, <laughs> and he actually stopped. Uh, attending religious classes, mm -hmm. and his younger brother, another nephew, started to complain, oh, you gave him 50 zlotys, and I, I want 50 zlotys, or 20 maybe zlotys. Uh, and so I told him, of course you can get it, but mm -hmm. on condition that you <coughs> stop going to, uh, to religious classes, and he obviously agreed. And so it was, of course, that's not the proper moral educational way of discouraging people to take so part in religious yeah. classes. And I didn't plan it, it was by accident <laughs> because it was meant to be a joke. Yeah. But that probably means and shows uh, whether these religious classes are effective from the point of view of the church. Yeah, yeah, of course, I have personal d d different uh, experiences. Taking your example, I actually uh, made the same joke with uh, uh, my family members, and, and? Uh, the boys said no. And they said no. Come on. Uh, how much did you and offer them? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> a hundred. Maybe worse or maybe hundred, more difficult. But it was it was um, a few. And they ago. refused. They refused. Yeah. Can we talk to them for our TV? <laughs> you know, we'll see yeah. what the amount I they might I think it would be accept. very interesting to, to, <laughs> to invite them. But, you know, more, more than that, uh, I have a daughter that's nine years old and uh, she's one out of two kids that do not attend in her class, in a class of 26 uh, students, kids, uh, who do not attend uh, religion classes. Mm -hmm. And um, <laughs> I mean, um, sometimes uh, girls, uh, her friends, come over to school and say things like, "Oh, we're going to pray for you that you get the presents from Santa Claus." Do you live in Warsaw? Yeah, I do. <laughs> and if you, the other know, side of obviously, the river, obviously, if you do not Asian. believe in God, then uh, <laughs> then the 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 Santa Claus who's a saint, he's not going to bring you presents because yeah. you don't believe in God. And, but very they, recently, just a few weeks ago... Do they believe in Santa Claus? Yes, <laughs> <laughs> How old are they? Nine. Uh, yeah. Uh, but a few weeks ago, uh, uh, a girl came to school and she burst into tears and so was very, she was devastated because her grandmother had told her that People who do not believe in God go to hell, and she really, really loved my daughter, who was one of her best friends, and she was feeling so, so sorry for her that she was hell. going to, yeah, that she was going to go to hell. And I mean, we are talking about kids. Yes, so yes. I went through all of you that. Can, I think you can, I mean, yeah, we, none of these experiences have not happened uh, when I was a yeah. kid. All of it has happened, uh, and I went to a Catholic of school. Of course. Uh, my grandmother told me all these things, uh, and she was pretty, you know, strong-willed. Uh, uh, but uh, I'm, I'm just saying that uh, I would be very, very careful with these uh, young little brains and what you can do with, with them. And I think uh, the impact is actually way bigger than, than, than you were can thinking. We, like even among my friends, if we discuss the, the feeling of guilt that we had as kids, the, the, how it impacted... That is a thing though, uh, that, that is something that may last longer than belief yeah. uh, in... in, in, in yeah, Most yeah, children from Catholic uh, families or Catholic surrounding, let's say, Catholic uh, subculture, 
become uh, autonomous morally and cognitively, become irreligious or uh, agnostic, being about 10 years old. Mm. Yeah. Even Barbara Stanos or myself, <laughs> I think I was about 10 when I became really an atheist yeah. of a kind. Of course, it was a very different time. So mm. I think that your daughter or daughters, but one is nine and the, the other one? Uh, the son is five and a half. He's just starting oh, school okay. this year. And I, so, yeah. But I think we'll they, they might change very rapidly, especially if they yeah, go they to will. school in Warsaw. They will. Yeah, Within I'm, a I'm year or two, uh, even uh, for fun only, want to make a bet on that. <laughs> we can, of course. <laughs> but, uh, I, but I do think they are, the, they are very... Um, there are things you can really unroot in little students no. like this, and uh, it does uh, last for decades. <laughs> but I'm not sure that it happens in the classroom. Um, no, I mean, of I, and that's the. I, I was an older boy at yeah. nine as well, and at eleven I started having my dad. So uh, I think that is sort of the, the age. age. Of course, I'm um, aware of this. But the, the classroom experience were not the ones that made the most. I think uh, uh, that made the the deepest impression. Uh, but what you have is that you do grow up in a culture where a lot of cultural values and social values are determined um, in a certain way. And I think this whole complex of yeah, feeling guilty about yeah. things, that is something that other people also talk you into in different ways. Of course. As a response you to your actions and, this, and course, to how you, you behave. Yeah, I understand. But yeah. Poland is hardly the country belonging to the culture of guilt. You know, and to <laughs> cultural anthropologists yeah. uh, differentiate or differ uh, or find the difference between uh, the cultures of guilt and cultures of shame. Yeah. And we're obviously rather a culture of shame. Yeah, I don't yeah. think that, mm -hmm. yeah, of yeah. course, uh, the situation with women, including young women, is a bit different. Yes. Women are more sort of too prone to, to, prone to, yeah. be, to feeling guilty. Mm -hmm. But still, mostly this, this shame is a problem or the factor or a factor which decides about people's changes or uh, growth, let's say. Yeah. And uh, what I want to say um, that we definitely need to have a conversation about the effects of religious classes. And I, I think that actually a lot that they do influence uh, uh, children's attitude toward religion in a way that they start to treat religious classes or religious instruction as any other subject in school. Yeah. And uh, they are usually very um, ambivalent about school and about subjects in school. So religion desacralizes itself. It's not only my opinion, it's also mm. an opinion of many priests. Yeah. Actually, quite recently, some months ago, I was on one of TV, TV stations in Warsaw with a priest. And we both agreed that religious uh, classes should be removed from schools, mm -hmm. mainly public schools, but even in private, yeah. apart from the schools run by the church, if, of course, maybe. Uh, and my reasons were up to a degree different. So mm -hmm. there was certain, of, of course, different. He was, uh, so at a certain moment, I was even for keeping, for fun, uh, for keeping religious uh, classes in schools because it destabilizes. Uh, yeah. The doctrine they deliver during the classes. You are helping the school with, schools yes, with I discourage think, kids. Uh, I think that yes, as young, much as young they people. Do in case uh, of science and yes, yes, of course. Well, I think so. It, of course, it's complicated, and I am mm. afraid today, at this moment, we have no time to develop this particular issue. Perhaps we should think, although we haven't managed to talk about what we planned which was Holland, Poland, what we can learn from each other. <laughs> maybe, oh, yeah. maybe another time when you can... When Hopefully, you can yes, yes, gladly. Yes. Yeah. But what do you think? Uh, perhaps it's time to finish our conversation? Yes. I think we, you, our uh, viewers could uh, draw some conclusions from this conversation as to what we can learn from each other. But maybe we'd like to, because my suggestion to stop was quite sudden, maybe we'd like to say something final and of utmost and importance. Decisive. Oh God, <laughs> I, don't, uh, I don't know about that. But uh, I do think that, about the last point you made, uh, my experience was that, uh, first of all, the religious education I got was, first, in primary school you lapped it up, 
uh, that was well that the the content of the classes was about uh, Catholic charity and you got the parables and uh, and basically Jesus was telling you how how to uh, play nice and share with other kids uh, we were not being told that abortion is not okay and, and all these things so that came at a later age but that came at an age where we uh, were pretty most of the kids in my Catholic college actually were pretty resistant to it so we got well, uh, for instance, we got different kinds of religious le lessons throughout our uh, secondary school period. Part of it was taught by a priest that did not go well. I mean, he was, uh, he was a, a constant target of criticisms and that was just, it was almost him against the world in those mm. classes. <laughs> it uh, happens so, very often. Yeah, and that was counterproductive. And then on the other hand, you had a different kind of religion teacher. But um, this was the kind that uh, uh, the kind of teacher where you actually do not know whether this is just a moral education teacher or not, and the moral education people who do the non-Catholic moral education, um, they uh, have the same kind of problem because their moral education teacher is so alike the liberal religion teacher that they cannot tell one from another almost. Uh, so. But fortunately yeah. in Poland we have very few sophisticated moral teachers, <laughs> regardless whether they are religious or non-religious. Yeah. So yeah. let's hope not that many will influence the way Polish children and Polish people uh, think about values and the world. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. I hope we'll have more conversations when you come to Poland about Certainly. not only Holland, Poland, what we can learn each other, but we will learn from your experience mostly. Thank you. Thank you again. Thank you very much.